Welcome to The Safety Plan, the show where I cover the latest cyber scam and how to avoid it on Lansing Community College Connect. I'm Paul Schwartz, and I'm happy that you are here. Let's do this. Now, the Safety Plan Show's format is, one, I will describe a real-world cyber scam, like phishing or malware, or identity theft, or IRS imposter scam or scareware, or one of the many, many other cyber scams. I will then explain why it could happen to you, and then finally, I will tell you how to protect yourself so it doesn't happen to you. So why should you listen to the Safety Plan episodes? Well, first, a selfish reason. I'm going to be a world-class cybersecurity leader, and to do this, I need to share my knowledge, and according to Dr. Eric Cole and many others, so that others may learn and grow and hopefully develop a collective knowledge, and hopefully others will become influenced and inspired by it. Second, a community knowledgeable on cyber scams will not fall for them in the future. Now, that's the biggest win. And finally, my third reason, it's another selfish reason. If people start practicing good cyber practices in their lives and at home, then they will practice those same skills at work, which makes your business or company or local community college more secure. So win, win, win. So I am Paul Schwartz. I work at LCC as the Director of Information Security, and I coordinate security issues for the college, things like data breach coordination and account compromise investigations and, well, proactive phishing of our employees, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Now, I've worked in cybersecurity for 27 years. Now, that started with about 20 years in the Air Force before I ended up at LCC. And I have a few degrees and a few certifications, which I'll get into later. And some of them are super fun, six-hour fun tests for those. So, hey, listen, I'm, I'm kind of distracted right now because as, as I was driving into LCC, I was listening to the radio, and now I have a song stuck in my head. And coincidentally, it's the safety dance. And I'm sure you've heard of it. It's like, doon, doon, da doon, 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 doon. We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind because your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine. And then I started singing, we can be safe if we want to. We can leave the criminals behind because if your friends aren't safe and if they aren't safe, well, they're, they're no friends of mine. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit nutty and obviously the college has allowed me budget less artistic freedom and i will take advantage of that position so anyway today's show is on fishing and i want to cover some big real life world examples did you know that the largest data breach in history which is three billion accounts at yahoo it happened in august of 2013 was started with phishing and you probably remember the target breach back in 2014 that was started by phishing uh, another one the sony breach where they were attacked by hackers and and released the the film the interview that was started by phishing in fact facebook and google each lost a hundred million dollars to sophisticated phishing and wire fraud schemes so what, I, what i'm trying to say is phishing is the top data breach threat to organizations and to you it's one of the top scams targeted at you now why can this happen to you because you have sensitive information like social security numbers and credit card numbers and you know passwords and bank account info these are something some things that criminals can monetize and so let's get into what phishing is now this is a technique that uses malicious emails and phone calls and texts and social media posts that are disguised as trustworthy and legitimate but they are attempting to fool you they're attempting to you know, steal your sensitive information. Like I spoke of early, these social security numbers and credit card numbers and, and something that these criminals can monetize. They're also trying to get you to open up a link or an attachment, which would infect your, you know, device with, or your computer with malware. And that's only to, to get a foothold on that device and to capture your info. They could also uh, ask you to do something nefarious, like buy gift cards for them because they're stuck in a meeting. Now, here are some classic phishing examples, like the IRS emailing you about your tax refund or that you owe them money or Microsoft contacting you that you have a virus on your computer or, or a legitimate company, although they're faking, uh, like Netflix or Apple or PayPal asking you to verify your account. Now, criminals send out millions of phish emails because it's so easy and free to send to so many people at once, but just one person needs to click on that fish email to make it worthwhile and because people are naturally curious and for some greedy or complacent or you have a desire to please or, or fearful they 
These people can be manipulated to click on these links and attachments without giving any thought to the safety of their computer or their information. Now, Lansing Community College, for instance, receives 10 million emails each month um, on our employee network, but only about 300,000 of those are legitimate emails. The rest are all spam and phish attacks and malware emails. And LCC has a sophisticated email filter system that examines each, each message and uses artificial intelligence, and, and the system dynamically categorizes each email as spam or malicious or legitimate based on the sender or the sender's reputation or the content of the email or the recipients or the sender or various header information, and uses a, a, a collective threat intelligence uh, from the all the organizations that participate in this um, email filter, filter system. But there are ways to evade our technical controls, and criminals are able to rapidly change the sender and the content and the other information to bypass our email filter and deliver you know, a small number of, me of messages or emails until our filters can compensate for those changes. Okay, so let's talk about phishing. First, it's okay to open and read emails, but once you, in that email, open the attachment or the link or enable the macro to that attachment, in a, in a Microsoft Office you know, document, or enable editing and content, or download the pictures or display the images, or if the email you know, provides a password and says, hey, put this password in that encrypted attachment, um, or if you provide your credentials to a website, all these things, bad things can happen, and malware, you know, it, it could result in malware infection or account compromise. So here's what you have to do. You must weigh all the fish red flags to determine if an email is legitimate. The number one reason by far for people getting fish is they claim they were too busy and didn't take the time to look for the red flag. So here we go. The seven red flags of identifying fish emails. The first is match the display name uh, with the sender's email address. And you'll see that at the top of your emails of who's sending you that that email and you're going to look for consistent information. So if the display name says Sally, but the email address says Bob at lcc.edu, yeah, that should be a red flag. And you're going to look for misspellings in there. You're going to look for free email accounts. Criminals love to use Hotmail and Gmail and those free email accounts. You're going to look for emails that have, say, no contact info in the email, no one to contact to, to get further follow up or know what we call signature block at the bottom saying who the email's from. And you're going to want to compare these emails to previously received emails. So a Walmart email looks like the next Walmart emails. And I also like to look in the to field. So who it's sent to. Is it just addressed to me or is it am I blind courtesy copied and it's not addressed to anyone or is it addressed to a group? These can be signs or red flags. Now this is extremely tough to do on a phone, a smartphone, uh, because it doesn't it neatly show you the entire email address until you click on or, or press down on that email address or that display name to show the email address. And a bit of a surprise for all of this, that display name and that email address and all that other information, the signature block, all that can be spoofed and faked and, and used to fool you. All right, here's the second red flag, a link or attachment. So once, once you open or or um, you know, click on a link or attachment, it could lead to an immediate malware infection. So it doesn't matter if you quickly click on the link and then move off and close it down. As soon as you click or, or select that link, immediately malware infection could occur. And, and that malware infection could be malware such as a keylogger recording uh, the activities on your computer, or a password scraper, go through and find your passwords. It could set up some sort of backdoor criminal access or ransomware. And so what I advise people to do then is the hover method over those links. Um, and so you're going to move your cursor of your mouse uh, on your laptop over the, the link, and then it'll show you the true address of where it's going. Now, you want to see and dissect that, that URL, that website address, to see if it looks familiar and legitimate. And you could also you know, cut and paste that into a... Um, a program like antivirus.com or a hybrid analysis.com to see if it's legitimate. They'll give you um, analysis of those websites to say whether they're infected with malware or not. Although, uh, another issue with those links is they could be just redirects going to some other website. So, virus total or hybrid analysis.com, they'll, they'll give you indications of that. Um, there's also issues with URLs um, or links in emails and that they might be a shortened URL. So programs like Bitly or Owly, they take that URL and they make it super short so people can include it in like Twitter posts and whatnot, but 
They're also included in emails to hide the true address of where you're going to. So you got to be very aware of those. And with attachments, make sure the attachment icon and the corresponding file extension match. So a Word document has dot, you know, .doc instead of .zip, um, meaning it's a, a zip uh, folder, uh, which could include malware. And so these are uh, solutions um, to help you uh, identify the red flags in these links or attachments. So number three for the red flags, I want you to look at the language and the grammar and the logos um, and the formatting of the email. You're going to look to see if the, you know, the language and the spelling and the grammar are off. So, you know, it sounds like they don't come from a native English speaker. That could be a red flag. Uh, reputable professional organizations like Walmart, and Netflix, and Apple, they won't ask you for login info or credit card info or your social security number. And the, their emails will look very professional with logos and unsubscribe links and formatting and so forth. So look to see if it doesn't look so professional. And again, all of this can be spoofed uh, and faked. Okay, number four of red flags. Here we go. Sender doesn't seem to know the recipient. So you're going to get emails that are fishes that say, dear customer or they're not specifically addressed to you and sometimes there'll be inconsistent greetings like how a sender doesn't normally address an email to you this is definitely a red flag or let's say the content um of the uh the sender doesn't even apply to the recipient like why would i get an email asking me to update um you know my my uh, swimming pool um, membership when I don't even belong to a swimming pool. So that's definitely a red flag. Okay, here we go. Number five, along that same line, content is bizarre and unbelievable and too good to be true. And so similar to my swimming pool membership, how about uh, resumes? If I'm not hiring anybody and all of a sudden I get an email with a resume, that seems to be out of context. Uh, or I get an invoice for something I didn't buy. Um, that again, it doesn't make sense. Or how about an email that says I've won a large financial reward, um, um, or, a, a you know, a big prize or, or an award. Um, these are definitely too good to be true and a sign of being a fish email. Okay. Number six, we have urgency warning. Um, this is, uh, the wording of fish emails, trying to get you to open those links and attachments. See what the criminals are trying to get you to do is act without thinking. And, uh, you know, they do that so urgency can be done through claims of like you've lost account access or you need to you know a great one is you've received a speeding ticket and need to pay a fine or you have an arrest warrant or a virus infection or your account's been hacked or, or your password's expired or something that will cause or induce panic in you to get you to act without thinking that that urgency and sometimes fish emails they like to hide um their links behind images so be careful in fish emails um, that are a big picture of the text just waiting for you to click on it so that in effect selects the link and sends you off to that malware infected site okay here's the last one and in red flag number seven that's probably the most important were you expecting the email okay so is this normal traffic that you were expecting um, usually fish emails come out of the blue and um, you and, and, and are very suspicious. Um, but what I like to advise uh, people to do is treat all emails as if they're malicious. And so every email you're going to look through and spot red flags and try and develop a confidence of whether the email is legitimate. Okay. So that's the four, I mean, sorry, that's the seven red flags of identifying phish emails. What do you do if you suspect an email is fish or fake? The first thing I do is advise people to call the, the, the sender of the email, you know, a different channel than email. So call the sender and ask them if the email is legitimate. So if you get a suspicious email, just contact the sender and say, hey, is this, did you send this and this information doesn't make sense or just looks a bit suspicious? I would also advise people that work for a company that has an info security team or a help desk, I would report that fish in to the help desk or the, the info security team because they're going to look through the email systems and see who else has received that same specific fish and be able to send a warning or pull that email out of their inboxes. 
I also, I also recommend that you do not give your social security number or credit card number or personal info to anyone that calls or emails you. You should always initiate communication using, say, the appropriate website. So if Am a fake Amazon asks you for your credit card number, I would go to the Webazon, the Amazon web address, amazon.com, and not through a link in the email. And if you think you've fallen for a phish email, I would change your password. I would conduct an antivirus scan and, and again, report it into the to your, your company's help desk. Or if it's a personal account, you can report it into like Gmail or, or Outlook.com or who your email provider is. Wow. Okay. That's it. You've now been trained on how to identify a phish email. That's a wrap of today's safety plan episode. If you have any questions or have been a victim of a cyber scam, tell me about it by contacting me at the safety plan website at lcc.edu slash connect. Next episode, I'm going to cover malware. I'm Paul Schwartz, and this is Lansing Community College Connect. Voices, vibes, vision. So long.